shall we? Oh, recording in progress. Lovely. Let's come to Stan then and we'll make a start and see how we feel by the end of this evening. Okay. So, feet hip distance apart, knees are soft. We're just finding that neutral pelvis by doing a few of those little tilts and then come to where your pelvis rests level. We're going to relax the arms down by the side. Imagine you've got little weights attached to your fingertips that are just gently dragging your fingers down towards the floor. And then I want you to take a deep breath in and as you breathe in, you're going to shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. And as you breathe out, melt those shoulders down and away. Let's have a nice big sigh out. Take any tension away, breathe in. And out. Keep going, nice breath in, shoulders shrug up. And melt that tension away. Good, two more. Good, nice big exhale out, don't rush that breath out. And out, beautiful, grow tall through the crown of your head, piece of string is pulling you up. Keep those shoulders melting down towards the waist, gently draw the tummy towards the spine and let's go in with those arms. So we're gonna float one arm up towards the ceiling. We're gonna join it with the other arm, keep that gentle tension through your tummy so your rib cage doesn't flare forwards. And then we're going to float one arm down and then the other arm. Good. So just simple up, up, down, down, but really thinking of the placement of those shoulders and the connection of your rib cage, gently drawing down towards the waist. Nice long neck, nice heavy shoulders. Good. Keep it going. Super simple. Up, up, down, down. It's up to you if you keep leading with the same arm or if you want to change. I don't mind. Just whatever feels good to you. Good. Okay, we're going to do one more. I might change for this last one. Good. But this time we're going to hold those arms up above the head. So just do a quick check on that lovely long neck. Make sure those shoulders haven't crept up. Okay. Keeping that gentle tension through the tummy, you're just going to reach one arm up. And as you do, you just feel that rib cage shift across towards the side that you're reaching. So the side of the body opens and then repeat that on the opposite side. So you get a little bit of shortening on that side of the shoulder that you're reaching towards and you get that transfer of the rib cage across the spine. Good. And if you're happy with that, you can maybe even look up and you're just going to glance towards the hand that you're reaching upwards. You got, you're a puppet on a string and someone's just pulling those fingertips up towards the ceiling. Good, one more on each side. It's really nice to open up either side of the rib cage. Good, and then come back to the center and then just melt those shoulder blades down away from the ears, lovely. Now I want you to think about your breastbone. What you're simply gonna do is lift your breastbone up towards the ceiling and just gaze up ever so slightly and then forwards. So it's a little arch of the top part of the spine trying to keep that pelvis neutral and forwards. Now, if the neck feels, the head feels too heavy on the shoulders, just keep looking forwards as you arch up and down. So you've got a, cat, um, a beam of light shining out your breastbone and it shines forwards and then it points up towards the ceiling and then back forwards again. Two more, arms should be nice and warm now as we've held them in that position. Good, one more, this one we're gonna hold. And now we're gonna just twist so that beam of light is shining towards one corner of the room and back to the center and over to the other corner of the room. Oh, and back to the center. One more on each side, watch those shoulders. Isolating that movement as best as you can to the top part of the spine. Good, and then come back to the middle and float those arms down and they probably feel like they need a bit of a shake. Good, okay. Let's give the arms a rest and work the legs. So I want you to place your hands on your hips. That's going to give you a little bit of feedback in terms of what's going on in the pelvis. So we're avoiding too much forwards and backwards movements and we don't want any hitching of the hips either. So I want you to shift your weight across to one leg, 
keep that knee soft, kneecap pointing forwards, and then you can just slide the opposite foot forwards, maybe keeping the foot in contact with the mat, maybe just lifting ever so slightly off. Switch across and repeat on the opposite side. I'm just gonna drop my camera so you can see my feet. So just simply going from right to left with a little slide forwards, as if you're just brushing your foot along the floor and maybe just lifting it when you get to the end of that movement. Good, keep it going. So really focusing on that level pelvis. So as you switch across, the whole of the center line of the body goes with you and it's not dropping that pelvis out to the side to allow you to free your opposite leg. Really working hard to keep nose, um, chest bone and belly button all in line. Good, keep it going side to side. Brilliant, looking good guys, really nice control. Okay, we're gonna take that and we're gonna hold at one side. So your toe could gently be pressed on the floor or you can maybe lift the leg. Now, as soon as we lift the leg, we're gonna get this quad working, but I want you to think mainly about this standing leg. Really tuck your hip underneath so that pelvis stays level and we're simply gonna hold, keep holding. You could be here still, or you could be here. Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. Two, one, lovely touch down and simply swap sides. Same idea, so lengthen that leg away. Gentle pressure with your toe on the floor or lift the foot. So obviously with the toe on the floor, you've got that added point of contact, but you can still work quite hard with your balance. So imagine there's, um, a jam tart underneath your foot and you don't want to squash it, real light pressure, or you can hold here, keep holding, level pelvis, keep holding. Try not to hitch as well to lift that hip up. That's where you are, keep holding. Five, four, three, two, and one, lovely. Feet down, give those legs a shake. I should be waking up those thighs now. Okay, still gonna work on opening up through the body, okay? Hands on the hips, and all I want you to do is tilt one elbow down towards the floor. Think of that nursery rhyme, I'm a little teapot, good. And then come back to the center and tilt over to the opposite side. Imagine you're stood between two panes of glass and that glass has just been nicely polished or glass, should I say, from my mother's listening. Okay, so you want to keep that in a lovely singular plane of movement, no twisting it just yet, and just keep going from side to side. And as you go from side to side, you really feel the side of that body opening. Lovely, and put, popping your hands in this position, you should feel that lengthening and that contraction on the opposite side. Okay, now we're going to break that glass. We're going to come down to one side, and that chest bone is just going to twist up towards the ceiling and you're gonna follow that movement so your nose toes in line with your chest bone and then you look forwards and you come back up, lovely, over the opposite way. Slide down, twist up, twist forwards, back to the center. Good, one more on each side. Up, forwards, back to the center, final side. Up, and forwards and back to the centre, lovely. Hopefully that's really worked around the waist and upper back. Okay, keeping those hands on those hips, knees aren't completely locked out, nice sort of soft legs. We're gonna hinge at the hips from here, keeping that spine in a neutral position. So your shoulders start to travel forwards over your hips and you feel a stretch through the back of the legs. Keep that spine level, we're not folding down, nice long spine, and then we come back up to stand again. And simply repeat. So the heart folds down towards the floor. Keep a gentle tuck of the chin into that juicy peach, resting between your chin and your chest, and then come back up again. Now as the back of your body starts to feel happier with this, you can go a little bit deeper. As you go down, can you draw your tummy towards your spine? Because you're gonna to get to a point where you feel like you're teetering on the edge of the cliff and you've gotta keep that stability. Stop yourself from falling forwards. Good, keep going. Breath out as we go down. Tummy towards the spine. 
and a breath in as we come back to stand. And really use that stretch sensation in the back of your leg as a signal as how far to go. We've got two more. Good, now we're gonna add our arms after this next one. So our dumb waiter, okay? This is called our waiter's bow. We're gonna add our dumb waiter in. So elbows tucked in at the waist. As we come forwards, we're gonna open out through the shoulders, trays of champagne glasses to either side, really snug those shoulders down towards the waist and then come back up, bring your trays of champagne forward, lovely. So you're opening out with hands as you lower down, squeeze the back of the shoulders together gently and then come back up, super, two more. Looking good guys. And we're gonna hold this next one. Okay, you can hold either of the hands, trays of drinks either side or hands back on the hips. Now, once you're happy with what you're doing, focus your gaze a couple of feet in front of you so the back of your neck stays nice and long. And then I just want you to bend into alternate heels without switching your hips from side to side. So imagine you're in a narrow corridor. Don't let your hips hit either side of the corridor as you bend into alternate heels. So your hands could be holding those trays of drinks still or they could be holding onto your hips. Keep going, we're here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lovely, heels come down, come back up to stand and give everything a shake. So we really work to isolating that movement in the spine, keeping it through kind of a neutral range. Now we're going to work on our roll down. So it gives us a good idea, a good opportunity to open up through the back. So every bone is now moving on its own. Whereas with our previous exercise, we were kind of isolating that movement to the hips. So we know what we're doing with our roll downs. Let's enjoy them this evening. Take it easy because you've just really hinged here and you want to give your back an opportunity to open up. So peel down through your spine rolling the chin to the chest, rolling down through every bone in your back. Maybe to begin with, you just hang here, kind of hands in front of your knees. Give yourself a chance if you want to go a little bit deeper, you can do, or you can go to that one on your next option. Keep going, just roll down and then come back up. I'm just going to come and see if anybody else joined us through our warm up. Lovely. Hi Lauren. Good to see you. Oh Lucy, good. Loads of people have joined us. Snuck in while I wasn't looking. Julia, that looks great. Lovely. Lovely, Ivana. Okay, keep going with those. Super. And then just begin to work a little bit deeper. If you want to on that next one, you can do those little heel raises that we just did with our waiter's bow. Yeah, just getting to the end of that. Bend into alternate knees, raise alternate heels, just to work to the back of the body a little bit more. Super, nice big sort of flexibility session this evening. Next one's gonna bring us down to the mat and we're gonna go into our downward facing dog. So taking your time, slowly roll through, don't rush into it just because you know what's coming, okay? Peel down away from your wall. And then if you need to, you can bend the knees just to bring your hands towards the floor. And then walk your hands forwards, keep your feet where they are, keep your hips lifted until you're in that inverted position. Okay, once your hands are at a comfortable position, don't take it too short, yeah? Walk those hands along to the end of your mat. And then you're gonna push back into your heels and you're gonna look towards your feet and maybe even look up towards your tummy. And that gives us a gentle reminder that we're gonna draw the tummy towards the spine at the same time. And then those heels are back. So just walk into alternate heels for me, bending alternate knees. And as we do that, we're just encouraging a little bit more flow through the back line of the body. And that should open up. Oh, I've lost most of you. I can just see bottoms in the air. <laughs> Looking good. Take it a bit longer, Luce. Feet forward, feet back or hands. There you go. Lovely. Cool. Very nice. Okay. And take a deep breath in for me. And as you breathe out, just push back into both of those heels. Beautiful. And we're going to hold this for three deep breaths, connecting it with our Pilates breaths. 
right down to the base of the lungs, feel the rib cage expand and breathe out. Maybe you feel your body just go a little bit further as you breathe out. Second breath in and out. And final breath when you're ready in. And as you breathe out, just lower your knees down towards the mat and sit back in your shell stretch or child's pose as your hips go towards your heels. Lovely, just hang out there for a moment, just another breath or so, adjust your cameras if you need to. We are down on the mats now for the rest of tonight's session. Halfway there, okay, hopefully you're feeling nice and flowy, nice and mobile. When you're ready, we're gonna work the legs, okay? So I want you to come to kneel, kneeling in a high kneeling position this evening. So your knees are stacked beneath your hips, not together. Yeah, little gap between those knees. And from this position, we're gonna do some pelvic tilts because we didn't do them in our warm up. And it's actually quite nice to do your pelvic tilts in this kneeling position. You'll find a little bit more work just to get into that posterior pelvic tilt where you're tucked underneath. And then a little bit easier to get into that anterior pelvic tilt. Well, it is for me anyway. So just forwards and backwards on that pelvic tilt. Super, and again, another opportunity to just work through the side of the body. So once you find that neutral position, you're gonna bring your arms either side of you and you are imagining you are a rope in tug of war. So one team is pulling you over towards their side, push down through the opposite leg, come back to the center, and then the other team's winning. Good, go to the opposite side. Oh, I've gone through. Good, you should really feel that through the side of the body. And again, back to that first side. Good. And back to the center and final side. Lovely. Now that's just opened up the side of the body so that we can work into that lateral line. So bring your arms down. We're going to reach down to the side of the mat now. Now for some of you, if the mat feels like quite a long way away, if you've got any cushions or anything you can lean on that's a little bit higher, like your sofa or a coffee table. Otherwise, we're going to come down to the mat and the arm that you're, the leg, opposite leg stretches away. Okay, super. So as we did in our warm up, we're going to brush that leg forwards along the floor and then we're going to brush that leg away. So imagine you're drawing a vertical line along the bottom of your mat with your leg and then come away. And I want you to keep your hand just around that top hip because we've really tried to isolate this movement to the hip. So you're not getting loads of movement at the spine. Yeah, all of this stays nice and steady and the outside of the hip does the work. Now we're just warming up here guys. So stick with this. Now I do appreciate sometimes the hands can get a little bit tired from taking your weight. So if you need to push away at any point, give it a bit of a stretch and then join back in. And then let's remember these necks as well. So no, Heavy necks, we're gonna keep looking forwards. We're gonna continue that lovely diagonal line through the spine. Okay, we've got three more. Let me come and quickly see. Good stuff, that looks good. Two more. Bab, and one. Brilliant, okay. Little pause there so you can just sit off that hand, give it a little bit of a circle, and then join back in when you're ready. So I'm gonna give you the option to repeat that movement, really focusing on that lovely long length leg and sliding, or you can come with me, which is gonna be a bit more of a challenge, and we're gonna do a rainbow. So we're gonna float the leg up, and we're gonna tap it down in front, and then float the leg over and tap down behind. So you're drawing that arch with your foot, and you're really isolating that movement to the hip, so keep that hand here so you can keep your waist nice and steady as you lift and float your leg up and over. Now think also about the leg that's still. Can you push through your hand so that your hip stays stacked over your knee and you're not collapsing down like this? So that leg that's giving you the support is gonna hold you there. Good. We've got three more. Remember the rainbow is a challenging option. And if you want to just stick with your leg slide, you can. We've got two more and we've got one more. Okay, option one. If you were in the leg slides, you can come here and do little lifts and lowers of that leg. Super tiny, even if your foot is just coming half an inch off the floor. I'm happy with that. If you want to work a little bit harder, 
Then lift your leg up to hip height and we're gonna come into butt kicks. So you're gonna keep your knee in line with your hip and you're gonna do little draws of that heel towards that bottom. It's a pulsing movement, so keep going. Pulse, 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 pulse. Heart rate goes up, bottom gets stronger, everybody's a winner. Keep going, pulse, 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 heel to bum, bum, or lift and lower. Keep going. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lovely. Stretch that leg out. Reach up and over. Sorry, Jill. Not quite done. <laughs> Good. Keep that foot down now. Just lengthen through the side of the body and catch your breath. Hopefully that top hip is nice and warm now. You can hold here or you can look up towards the ceiling and open your chest. Brilliant. Okay, come back to the centre. Just have a moment to push back into your shell stretch. Give your bum a bit of a wiggle while you're there. And we're going to set up here either for a leg pull or a leg pull prep. So the difference between those, just to remind ourselves, is we come into a box position, we set the spine up, nice long spine, tummy comes towards the spine and we lift the knees. That's your leg pull prep, or your full leg pull, or your plank. Hands are forwards, we lift the knees, and we stretch. Okay? Choose your option. Choose it wisely, because we're going to go for a nice, long hold. So when everybody's there, I'll do a slow and steady countdown, okay? If you're here and it gets tired, then you can come back into this box position. Okay. We are here for 10. Tuck those bottoms underneath. Nine, lengthen those shoulders. Eight, push through the heels of your hands. Seven, you can work your pelvic floor. Six, you can work your deep tummy. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good stuff. Drop those knees and sit back for me for a moment. Super, okay. That was just a nice little break for you, hard working break before we hit the other side. So come back to your kneeling position. Just do a few pelvic tilts for me, just to loosen off that back after that long hold. And then when you're ready, you're gonna set up into that side prop position. So the hand goes down towards the mat and the opposite leg reaches out. Remember, you could be here resting on a little table. You could make a fist and plate your weight through your fist. It's often quite good if your wrists get tired with this. Okay, I think we're mostly there. So we're gonna start with that brushing the leg along the floor. Now it's a really light touch with your foot on the floor. So imagine um, you're just brushing away a chalk line. Really gentle pressure, good. Keeping that movement isolated to the hip as you go back, squeeze your bottom, but try not to over arch your back. Brilliant. Take rests when you need to. Otherwise, we've got six more. I'm going to come and see you. Lauren, that is a brilliant view. It looks beautiful. Well done, Liz. Looking good, Chris. Brilliant. Some of you I can't see, but everybody's looking good. Just remember those necks. Don't let your head hang off your neck. Keep looking forwards. That's great. Well done. Okay, little pause if you need to. And then reset back up. You can repeat that leg um, brush or you can come into rainbows with me up and over. So remember, if you're doing rainbows, you don't have to make massive rainbows. There could be teeny rainbows with a teeny pot of gold at the end, or you can have nice big rainbows with a big pot of gold at the end. Good. Okay, and again, isolate that movement to the hip. Keep your waist steady. Take a check in on that leg that your weight bearing is through. Make sure your hip hasn't collapsed away from your knee. Push through the heel of your hand so you're getting a nice opportunity to strengthen those shoulders. Wherever we are, with rainbows or lines, we're going to go for four more. Three more. Two more. And one. So you can pause here. Take that rest if you need to. Give that leg a bit of a shake. Now remember, if you were doing those lines before, we're gonna do small lifts and lowers. We're gonna make that a pulsing movement. I think I forgot to say that first time round. So little lift, little lower. Otherwise, we're gonna bring the leg to hip height and we're gonna do that pulsing movement 
bum, heel to bum. Now, if you are in that hip height position, try and keep your knee in line with your hip so that your knee doesn't come forwards. Okay, so just glance down and make sure that knee's roughly below that hip. Okay, and we're pulsing here 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, good work, 3, 2, and one, stretch that leg away, take that arm over the top and open up through the side of the body. Marvellous, okay, if you want to, you can take that into a twist as you look up towards the ceiling. Try and keep that shoulder away from that neck, open that body up. Three, two and one, lovely, come back round and just sit back for a moment for me in your child's pose. So we ended the first round of our side kick sequence with a plank. We're going to do it again. Nice long hold. So you've got your two options. You can just lift the knees in your box position, which is your leg pull prep. Or you can do your full plank, which is your um, leg pull. Um, choose your options. You can maybe challenge yourself if you didn't go for the higher option the first time. But if you did and you feel like that was enough, um, then do what you want. Get into it and we'll, um, I'll start counting down. Just remember all of this is the position of the spine. So nice long spine, maybe just accentuate, kind of tucking the tailbone underneath. And we're here for 10, nine, rib cage down to waist as well. Eight, seven, stay with me. Six, five, four, three, two, one, don't collapse out of that one. If you need to, you can lower the knees or maybe keep the knees lifted. Start to bend the elbows, keep the elbows tucked in towards the waist and slowly lower yourself down towards the mat. So your tummy's down, your thighs are down. And then we're gonna push into our um, cobra stretch. You can come into full cobra or baby cobra. Do what works for you. Focus on tucking the tailbone underneath and pushing the front of the hips down towards the mat. Maybe have your feet slightly wider than your hips. Shoulders are uh, melting away from the ears and we're looking forwards or we're looking up. And hold that for me for three deep breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Final one. Inhale. Exhale, lovely stuff. Okay, took those toes underneath, release the back and push into those hips again. So into those heels, child's pose, and it feels lovely just to take that stretch out of your back. Super, okay, we're gonna finish with hundreds. So come to lie on your backs. One more chance to work those abs isometrically, which is where we just switch them on and hold them. Okay, so hundreds, remember this is where we pulse the arms. So your first option, level one, just really working on awareness of your tummy. So your knees are bent, feet hip distance apart. You've got a little space in the small of your back, arms down by your side and we pulse, okay? Level three, we come into double tabletop, okay? You could always at any level add a little head lift. So slide the rib cage down towards the waist, lift the head and shoulders off the mat, okay? That could be done here, that could be done here. Or we can come into level five where we bring the knees together, we straighten the legs and we pulse, okay? You can do that with the head lifted or the head down. So I've given you adequate options there. You can choose what you wish. And we're gonna go for our final countdown of this evening and of online classes for now. So 10, nine, if you're working with straight legs, squeeze those thighs. Eight, seven, remember to breathe. Six. Five, four, three. Oh, challenge if you've got tight hamstrings like I do today. Two, and one. Slowly lower down, head down if you're there, and hug those knees towards your chest. Gently rock from side to side. Okay, you can hang out here if you want to. Maybe do a few little twists from side to side just to loosen off the back. 
And then when you're done, please come and say goodbye.